quick fix mental tricks to deal with stage fright. So the content for this class comes from a book that I'm writing on um, going from having stage fright all the way to performing in the zone. There's like two halves to what I'm talking about here. There's getting past stage fright to the point that you can actually function on stage rather than being panicked. And there's going from there to being in that magical spiritual place where there's no chatter, there's no fear, and everything flows in kind of a zen-like state. Um, what we're going to talk about tonight is techniques for getting through that first half. Dealing with stage fright so you can function on stage and enjoy yourself, hopefully. All right, first, a safe boundary. If you can imagine a moat or a cylinder a cylinder around you or being surrounded by lions or warriors or um, a ring of fire um, you can come up with your own image but just imagining yourself being surrounded by something that protects you from any negative energy coming from the audience and in within which you are completely safe that can do it I've used that technique even in non-musical situations like when I was going into a, a room where I was afraid there might be someone that I wasn't prepared to run into on that day. I guarded myself with my warriors and went in there and I, I felt like I could handle whatever came my way. When you think about this safe boundary, you want to imagine that um, your positive energy in your music can go out and that positive energy, love, acceptance, whatever, from the audience can come in, but it protects you from anything negative. You might even imagine, you know, translucent egg. <laughs> there are all kinds of things that people can imagine. Whatever works for you. The next one um, I call a success log. Um, another source calls it a highlight reel. When the left brain gets going and starts chattering and telling you, oh, you're going to miss that note, you're going you're gonna to pass out on stage, whatever, you need to just replace the story and you can replace it most easily by having a log of past successes to do, to draw from because it's hard sometimes in the moment when you're nervous to think of what what you know some great moment that you want to replace it with your mind is already churning on this negativity you need to have a source of positive images to replace with so right now start creating a success log and it doesn't have to be just musical it can be Anything that makes you feel good, anything that makes you smile, any moment that you felt like you overcame or you achieved or you won or you felt joy. Uh, for me, thinking about winning 2002 Nationals does it. You know, instant smile on my face and stage fright gone. Or I think about um, getting a compliment between sets from a woman when I was doing a jazz gig in Denver. So start making your list. It can get really long and then you have plenty to choose from. Now the next thing is to think about giving your energy to the room rather than waiting to receive it from the room. And that's what a performer does really, is give energy to the room. But if you can consciously think as you go on stage, I have a gift to share. Let me show you how this song goes. Isn't this gorgeous? Isn't this great? Let me share something with you. Let me, let me give something to you. Rather than going on stage and thinking, I'm going to play this song, I hope they like it. You know, I wonder what kind of energy I'm going to get from the audience. Think about only what you're giving. Because it will come back. But it needs to start with you. Another thing is to just focus on gratitude. This is like the success log in changing your mental focus from one of all the negative things that could happen, all the, all the judgments, to just the simple fact that you are getting to be on stage. Not everyone gets that. Not everyone has the privilege to be given a stage from which they can communicate a message. And there's gratitude for having the voice you have, for having the healthy body you do, for being alive. There, I mean, you can come up with a, a very long list of things to be grateful for, but even just things to be grateful for about being on stage. And if you think about how lucky you are in this moment, 
that can completely change your, your mental perspective. But some, uh, some final thoughts, um, the reminders that I keep in mind for myself on the occasions that I still get nervous sometimes, is just remember everyone's on your side. Especially at, at the local level, you know, it, the people who are at your shows are there for no other reason than to support you. You don't need to w be worried about criticizing. You're, you're probably the one criticizing yourself the most out of everyone in the room. One thing that helped me incredibly was you can only be who you are and where you are today. There's no reason to apologize for who you are and your current ability level. There's not going to be a magic moment at some point in the future where suddenly you're good enough not to have stage fright. There's not going to be a magic point where all of a sudden the audience goes from thinking you're not great to thinking you're great. It's just a journey and you're always going to be improving and you're always going to hear flaws in your own voice. You're always going to know you can do better. But as long as you're constantly improving, all you can be is who you are today. No apologies. You just have to get used to who you are today. <laughs> and then just breathe. Breathe. And let go. Authenticity is way more powerful than perfection. So don't worry about perfection. Just let it go. Sink from the heart. <laughs>